polytrichum reproduces both by vegetative and sexual methods in sexual method of reproduction first we will see how the anthridia and the archegonia develop before we understand how it develops let us see how we can identify the male and the female plant polytrichum is a dioecious plant that is the male and the female reproductive structures anthridium and the archegonia they develop on separate plants at the apex when we see the male plant the male plant shows an underground rhizome horizontally creeping structure aerial shoot the aerial shoot has the leaf like structures at the end of the growing season that is at the end of the vegetative growth at the tip of the male plant we find a cluster of leaves these leaves are called as the perigonial leaves these leaves are different from the other foliage leaves that is they are different in their size shape and color when we look at each leaf the perigonial leaf has a broad sheathing leaf base and an apical region which is drawn into a bristle like structure this is the bristle like structure and this is the sheathing leaf base the color is red or brown in the axils of these perigonial leaves we find large number of anthridia developing in the axillary position in the process of development of anthridia the apical bud of the main plant is not used so the plant continues its growth after the production of the anthridium again after the vegetative growth comes to an end another cluster of perigonial leaves is seen at the apex of the main shoot such type of growth after the formation of the moss flower in the male plant is called as proliferation when we look at the female plant the female plant has an underground same has an underground or subterranean rhizome an aerial shoot and the leaf like structures or phylloids at the end of the growing season the female plant also produces a cluster of leaves this cluster of leaves is called as the perichaetal leaves in the axils of the perichaetal leaves we find the archegonia in the formation of the archegonia the apical bud of the plant is used up that is the apical bud also develops into the archegonia because the apical bud is used up the plant the female plant does not grow further after the formation of the female flower or the moss flower so when we look at the plants we find we can very easily identify a male plant from that of a female plant because in male plant we see this growth of the main stem or main uh, stem like structure even after the formation of the flower or the anthridia 
this is called as proliferation where well, proliferation is not seen in the female plant The archegonia are born in groups at the apex of the female gametophore. When we look at the longitudinal section of the female gametophore, we find the female gametophore at the apex of the gametophore, a cluster of leaves are seen. This cluster of leaves in the female plant are called as the pericetial leaves. In the axils of the pericetial leaves, the archegonia are seen. A cluster of around 3 to 5 archegonia can be seen in the axils. In the process of formation of the archegonia, the epical bud is used up. That is, the epical bud also participates in the formation of the archegonia and that is why the female plant does not show any proliferation after the formation of the flower or the archegonia. In between the archegonia we find sterile hair like structures called as the paraphyses. The paraphyses are multicellular structures which are seen interspersed between the archegonia. When we look at a mature archegonia, the mature archegonia shows an elongated neck and a bulbous venter. The neck is surrounded by six vertical rows of cells which form the wall of the neck and a venter wall. The tip of the neck is covered by four cover cells. This is the neck. Inside the neck there are around 10 neck canal cells. The venter has a venter canal cell and a egg cell. Venter canal cell and an egg cell. These are the paraphyses which are seen interspersed between the archegonia. At maturity, the neck canal cells and the venter canal cell disintegrate. They form a mucilaginous substance which oozes out of the neck and remains as a mound at the tip of the neck. The biflagellate anthrozoids which have been already released from the anthridia they swim towards the archegonia a number of anthrozoids enter into the archegonia but ultimately one fuses with the egg cell the fusion product is called as the zygote this zygotic cell is the starting cell for the sporophytic generation The anthridia develops at the apex of the male gametophore. When we take a longitudinal section of the male gametophore, we find it is surrounded by a cluster of leaves called as the perigonial leaves.
the perigonial leaves differ from the vegetative leaves and in the axils of these leaves the anthridium develops The anthridia has a small stalk and a club shaped body. A cluster of anthridia develop in the axils of the perigonial leaves and the apical bud of the main gametophore is not used up for the formation of the anthridia. In between the anthridia, we find sterile hair like structures called as the paraphyses. The paraphyses are multicellular uniseriate structures, but in certain species, the apex of the paraphyses is drawn into a spatulate structure or a spoon like structure. So these are the perigonial leaves. The anthridium. The paraphyses. And the apical bud. Because the apical bud is still present after the formation of the male sex organs, this bud continues its growth and the stem elongates. This is called as proliferation. If we look at each anthridium, a mature anthridium shows a small stalk and a club shaped body. It is about 1.5 millimeter in length, 1.5 mm in length with a very small stalk and the club shaped body. The body of anthridium is covered by a single layer of cells called as the jacket cells and the apical region of the anthridia has one large cell which is called as the operculum 